Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. In 1987, four childhood friends were reunited after 10 years to investigate the murder of a mentor they all shared. During this time, they unlocked the deep secrets of the past and found themselves exposed to the darkness that surrounded them. Soon it became more than a fight for justice, and instead it became a fight against the ultimate evil. Six months later, in the winter of 1988, bonded by their knowledge of the dark unknown, they have decided to no longer be the victim. Now they seek out the deep roots of satanic corruption that hides in the shadows of society, all the while trying to mentor a new companion seeking justice for the death of his cousin. Institutionalized is the second story arc in the Chronicles of Darkness first edition story, The Ultimate Evil, set in Bismarck, North Dakota in 1988. Join us in this tale of satanic horror with Wayne, played by Adam, Che, played by Andrew, Alex, played by Mitch, Michael, played by Slavic, and the newcomer Derek, played by Tillman. If you'd like to contact us, you can find us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM and on Facebook and Discord at Twin Cities by Night. If you'd like to help support the podcast, you can find us on Patreon at Twin Cities by Night. We hope you enjoy. I've never really done this before. Writing down my thoughts. Diaries seem like such a girl thing to do. I just have to get this out. Working at the bar tonight, you know, it was normal up until this this guy, Terry Murphy, showed up. He's a reporter for the New York Post. What the fuck he was doing out in Bismarck, I had no idea. But he was here, and what he said brought up a lot. I don't know. It's hard to put into words. Maybe that's why I've started drawing again. But there, it is what it is. You know, I've put on the records and I've tried to zone out and it's very hard not to reach for the needle again after what he said. The vodka next to me is going quick and I think it's probably better that way because I don't want the nightmares. But he he asked about Amanda and everything that happened 10 years ago or whatever. I mean, fuck, I was a kid. I had no way to really know what was going on, but he wanted me to investigate her death. That that death was probably what kicked it all off. The nightmares and the, the drugs and the heroin all comes back to that. So now I don't know what to do. Do I do I do this investigation and learn things I probably don't want to know? Do I try to forget and pretend that these things never were things to begin with? Or do I see it through? I, I hope I know when I wake up. Because right now all I know is that the vodka is calling my name. So yeah, I guess this is uh, the second, we'll call this a journal. So yeah, this is my uh, second journal entry, I guess. I uh, What a weird fucking day. Mike called. Hadn't seen him in a long ass time. Turns out he's a cop. I, I'm pretty sure he's going to end up arresting me one of these days. That'll be fun. We, uh, we went and had breakfast at Denny's. I was rocking a pretty nasty hangover. But goddamn, those hash browns are good. And, you know, with enough coffee, anything is curable. But we had a lead. Uh, someone to talk to following up on Amanda's death. Uh, this guy, Jay Bishop, I guess he was, uh, wow. Well, it was in a halfway home. Just got out of prison. Some narcotics trafficking. Whatever. He, uh... Bit of a Bible thumper, that one. That's not what made it super weird. You know, it was... Something straight out of the Twilight Zone. Probably the best way to put it. He, uh... I had a... A memory come back to me. Something more of a vision. 
it was Jay, but, you know, ten years younger, just covered in blood, laughing like a maniac. That, that scared me. I'm not going to lie, it's been a couple of days. I, uh, he was telling us about these people that he hung out with. Some chick named Dora, some guy named Dunn. They, uh, they had all these satanic parties, drugs. He didn't think there was anything really to it, but that, I don't know. He was lying. I saw the blood on his face. I don't know if that's a memory or if that's something else coming into my head. I'm starting to think that maybe I, you know, the the drugs did brain damage or something because that was just too intense. I don't remember most of uh, the rest of the day. I know I woke up at Carla's, and I think I need to clean her rug. Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know how much I drank, but it's, I'm piecing it together. You know, we talked to Jay, and, you know, I talked a little with Michael, and we both, you know, I'm, Jay said that Dora ended up leaving the group because she married some guy named Johnny. And then, you know, Mike and I remembered that Jay, Dora, and Dunn, you know, they had issues with Amanda. They confronted her. And, I mean, Jay said he'd never hurt her, you know, and that Dunn was upset that she was messing up their business or whatever. Oh, Christ, I drank a lot. Maybe I should try to drink a little bit less so I can start getting some of this shit straight in my head. You know, putting it down here, pen to paper, I'm sure that's going to help, but I need to be, I need to be better, because there's no way that this is going to, that there's no way that I'm going to come out of this sane if I don't keep my head clear. So this one's going to be a little weird. I mean, I wasn't there for it, but the guys told me about it later. Um, yeah, the guys, uh, I guess... Terry got in touch with a couple more of the kids from that summer camp. Uh, Wayne and Chayton. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen them or talked to them. Chayton got big. He was a scrawny little shit from what I remember. But man, Wayne, you know, whatever, he's Wayne. You know, kind of kind of went the way I expected to. Him too. I thought about them a few times when I was uh, on the needle. A couple of times I uh, shot up and it was really weird. First thing that came into my head, memories of that camp and the kids. I think that might have been half the reason I did it. Drowned out the nightmares and brought back some of the good times. Probably wasn't the best idea. Either way though, should have just dealt with the shit and not with heroin. But yeah, so Terry got in touch with these two guys and I guess from what they told me, they went to uh, the house that that Dunn guy lived in. Uh, there was this old couple living there. And well, maybe they lived there, maybe they were the neighbors, I can't remember. But uh, they were talking to these these old folks, and I guess they were talking to the guy. He had uh, emphysema or some shit, because he had those tubes up his nose. And while they're talking, there's just the, these flies. And they're telling me that there are these flies on the dude's face. I think they said something about one of them going up the guy's nose and the guy just not noticing. He didn't seem to care. Maybe I'm remembering that wrong. I mean, my memory's been all over the place since this shit started. But I mean, Chayton and Wayne, they were, they were freaking out. They saw, you know, not just the flies on the old guy, but they saw a swarm of flies. Like the sky went backwards. The colors were all wrong. They started throwing up. It sounds like, you know, a bad trip or something, you know, some sort of weird episode or vision. But they swear they weren't on anything. They swear they didn't drink anything. But, I mean, I saw some guys do this weird desert Indian shit once. And they were freaking out and puking. And they said they saw all sorts of shit. I don't know. It just sounds too much like drugs to me. I guess whatever was going on, Mike was okay, but, you know, that makes me think it's even more drugs because Mike doesn't do that shit. He's a cop. He can't. They'll fucking can him for it. But that 
you know, thinking about that and thinking about what I saw when we were talking to that Bible thumper bishop, I don't know. I don't know, maybe there is something real to this Satan thing. It's really starting to worry me. But there's... There's no way I'm getting through this without getting through it. So, bottoms up. So, that was interesting. Uh, Mike dug up Dora's old address, the last one that he could find. So we went down to these uh, apartments, it's like a apartment project, you know, kind of the place that I would uh, sometimes score, brought back some bad memories and some weird ones. So we're, uh, we get out in the parking lot, and Mike and Chayton, they go walking up to the parking, or to the apartment building, and, you know, Wayne and I are in the parking lot by the car these these kids could have been us you know 10 years 10 years in the future from back then these kids come up and they're asking us for cigarettes I think I think they were looking for beer too but you know fuck that could have been me at that age probably was me at that age but I guess uh, Mike and Che found this Johnny guy that uh, Dora ended up marrying Found out the door doesn't live there anymore. Guess she uh, got into meth and is uh, a lot lizard down at the truck stop. Which, you know, yeah, saw a lot of meth heads. Really not sure which was worse, the smack or the meth, but gonna have to keep that in check. But yeah, Johnny was all about partying and having fun. And I guess Dora took it too far, maybe. I don't know, maybe she started seeing shit like I was, like I've been just needed some way to drown it out. Who knows? I'm spending more money on cigarettes. This, I, I'm drinking less, but, and I haven't gone back to old habits, but I'm definitely spending more money on cigarettes. We went back to uh, find Bishop again. We needed to talk to him a little bit more. We got there and he was gone. Nothing left of him in the house. Probably going to end up getting arrested, I think. If they ever find him, if anyone ever finds him again. But uh, as we're leaving, there was this big Indian dude. I don't know. Looked like an angry Sioux or something. Sitting there in an old pickup truck just eyeballing us as we left. We uh, I, you know, approached him and he just took off gravel flying I got a bad, bad vibe out of that I don't know what he was there for I don't think he was there the first time I don't remember seeing him there the first time so I'm I'm sure that's going to come back to us Wayne I guess uh, got a little ambitious decided he was going to uh, look into that house that uh, Dunn was in so he uh I guess he talked to uh, some real estate guy, you know, went and checked it out, got some weird vibes, especially in the basement. I wonder if there's some sort of like, uh, I don't know, I was reading this one book, I guess they call them Echoes, I'm not sure, but he, uh, he was definitely a little creeped out by it, well, more than a little. I guess he also found out that it was owned by some property management group uh, the, the Welkstetters I wonder if they have anything to do with this whole mess or if they just bought the house well after everything went down all I know is I'm spending a lot more money on cigarettes yeah I was pretty sure I was going to get shot tonight we went down to uh, the truck stop that Johnny said Dora worked at worked being a loose term so uh, Mike Chayton and I went into the truck stop and ordered some pie while Wayne talked to Dora in Che's Jeep I really hope he gets that cleaned and, you know we're sitting there having pie and that uh, Indian guy from the halfway house 
walks in. He comes right up to us, pulls a chair up to the end of the booth. Make sure we all see the gun he had tucked into his pants. Starts asking us why we're at the, the house looking for Bishop. Yeah, I was pretty sure he was going to shoot one or more of us. But uh, turns out he's looking for his sister. She uh, also dated that Dunn guy. So I don't know, maybe she was part of the group. Maybe she was just loosely associated, but I guess she disappeared. So, you know, I guess that guy, we're on the same team. His name is Brian Eagle. Something familiar about that name. Brian, I don't... Oh, hard to place, hard to place. I think I've come across one too many, maybe. So I guess Wayne went down to the uh, Capitol Library today. Yeah, he was looking through some of the old microfilm and microfiche, seeing what was going on with the, the house that Dunn was living in. I guess, uh, I guess he found out that the place was owned by that Welkstetter management group even way back when, back in the 70s, which kind of makes sense. I mean, we were all a little surprised at first, but, you know, we all, uh, well, turns out that Calvin Welkstetter died, uh, he died about five years back in some car accident. There's this big legal battle over who gets to control his estate, uh, whether it's his ex-wife, uh, Meredith or whatever. She's going at it with, uh, this, you know, his younger brother named Charlie Welkstetter. Well, of course, Wayne finds an old photograph of the Welkstetter family and fucking turns out that uh, Charlie Dunn is actually Charlie Welkstetter, Calvin's little brother. So, that makes that house a little bit creepier, I think. I don't think I... I, I don't think we should go back there, unless we're going to burn it down. Yeah, I need to get this on paper. I hope no one finds it, and I hope no one reads it. I might just burn this when it's done, but holy shit. Holy shit. I met the guys down at the main bar. We had uh, we had a few drinks, and uh, turns out Michael dug up Calvin Welkstetter's old address. It's uh, New Rockford, you know, two hours away. We're all a little uh, tipsy, so we decided that we're gonna take the drive the next day, and we work it out so that I'm gonna be uh, pretending that I'm this reporter, which you know I'm working for a reporter, so it's kind of true, maybe, and that uh, Wayne and Michael are working for me. You know, Chayton stayed with the car. Um, so we go up there, and uh, Charlie's at the house. Charlie Welkstetter. Well, we get in there, and we sit down, and we bring up Amanda. Man, Charlie aged poorly. Like, he aged like 20 years and 10. You know, for a guy that doesn't need to work a day in his life, he looked like he was working in a coal mine or something. Just drinking himself left and right to death or something I don't know look terrible anyways he's telling us about his brother Calvin how there's a bit of an age gap between the two of them Calvin went off to Harvard Harvard Business School kind of took over the family business their parents went off to Florida sort of an early retirement and Charlie got sent off to various private schools now Charlie's back visiting uh, one of the family properties I guess a ranch a uh Steps into his brother's office, finds this book there. Couldn't really get a good look at it, but it gave him a really weird feeling. Before he could, uh, before he could get any closer, his brother showed up, kind of pulled him out and set him on something else. Gave him a speech about how uh, he needed to use his inner strength to do good by the family. You know, some of this weird magic occult bullshit that seems to be cropping up. I, you know, you asked me a month ago if I would uh, put any stock into this sort of thing. I'd have laughed and probably had you thrown out of the bar. Now I'm not so sure. Anyways, so Charlie goes about finding all these uh, disenfranchised youths, you know, troubled kids, gets them doing drugs and listening to Black Sabbath, having all these, uh, you know, metal head Satan parties the ones that Jay Bishop was talking about he's doing all this trying to impress his brother he tells us one day he meets, meets Christina Eagle 
Brian Eagle's uh, sister. Says she opened up his eyes to how everything he was doing was bullshit. I guess they had a pretty hot affair or fling or whatever you want to call it with one another. So, and I guess uh, what pissed him off where Amanda gets wrapped up in all this. She told her to watch out for him, so they weren't safe to be around. He kind of got a little distant. His eyes did that thousand yard stare thing. You know, you can see it in all the, all the guys who went to Nam. You know, it's that look that they get sometimes, that far away look where they're not really there. He tells us he has to go take a leak. So we sit there shooting the shit, waiting for him to come back. Realize that it was taking a really long leak. Mike goes back to check on him. Finds him dead. Bled to death in the bathroom. So... I almost called my old dealer after that. But I didn't. But I am going to spend more money on cigarettes. And on liquor. So yeah, after, uh, after we find the body... That's where Mike finds the body. Wayne goes into uh, Charlie's bedroom. Finds a map of uh, that ranch he was talking about. A lot of red circles all over it. I guess they were looking for something. Not sure what, but we might have a clue. He also found the suicide letter. Looked like something that Charlie wrote out, but up until we showed up, I guess he didn't have the guts to go through with it. <sighs> Fuck. I think we may have pushed him to kill himself. Oh, that shit's gonna haunt me. But yeah, so... We read the suicide letter. I guess he... He killed his brother. I guess he ran him off the road. Said he couldn't live with the evil his brother represented. And uh, with what... I guess his brother did to Amanda and... Christina. Doesn't really go into detail. Kinda wish it had, but... I don't know, maybe there's something else there. Maybe when the cops are done tearing that place apart, we can sneak back in or something. Who knows? So, uh, Mike, being the cop and all, he gets on the horn with 911. And, uh, after we deal with that bullshit, we all find ourselves a local bar. Chayton, I guess, has some sort of alcohol radar because he found it right quick. And, uh, we just sat down and tried to hash a few things out. Yeah, we drove back town, back down to Bismarck. Yeah, not a word between us. When we got back in town, I guess uh, Chayton had this message from Brian Eagle. I guess uh, Chayton's granddad is some sort of big wig up at the res and was working with Brian, helping him through some uh, anger, I guess. But uh, Brian says we got to do a sweat lodge. I had no fucking idea what that was. Whatever, Che. I mean, Che gets us to agree to it. So we all, you know, drive up to the res, meet Che's granddad. He's a pretty friendly guy, actually. He's shooting the shit. Chilling with Wayne about his hair. We, uh, had to build the teepee. Well, weird. I don't think I've ever done anything like that, but it was kind of, uh, kind of fun, actually. And we weren't allowed to eat or drink. I guess that's part of the ritual or whatever. So we get in there, and I can't remember if I was down to my skivvies or if I still had pants on. I don't know. But we get in there, and we got this fire and these hot rocks in the middle, and I guess he poured the water on the rocks three times. I, I don't think we all saw the same thing. I know. I definitely didn't see what some of the guys saw. First thing, I just hear someone screaming in my ear, Hey, you little shit. I turn around, and there's Calvin Wilkstetter fucking dead guy screaming that we can't stop him that he's going to do what he's going to do and there's nothing we can do to get in his way and then before before I can really like dive into that I get this the next dowsing it's a vision of uh, that Christina chick I guess sitting on the rocks telling us we need to put this to rest we gotta cleanse this evil find it and scourge it and then again, the third douse, I mean, came too quick. I get a vision of the night after. I got the, you know, the confrontation with Amanda. 
I thought I'd forgotten about this. Well, maybe it's not a vision. Maybe it's just a memory coming back to me. But you know, am I remembering other shit from the past? Am I maybe remembering things from the future? I don't know. This is just... I swear it was like being high again. But it, we're... You know, it's we're camping out in the field by the truck stop. When we go down to this house, we're going to egg it and TP it. And we get there and... So we're looking into the house. Um, we're looking in through this basement window. And we see Dora and Jay there. They got the these black robes on. They got candles. And Dora pulls this German shepherd out of a kennel. And just goes right and cuts its throat. And we watch the blood spray right onto Bishop's face. And then Dora starts screaming. And the next thing I know, I'm being dragged out of the teepee by by Raymond and Brian. And I'm, I'm puking. We're know we're crying it just i don't know it was like coming off a bad trip or waking up from you know some sort of weird heroin dream i guess uh i don't know after we got dragged out of the tp you know, the guys told me i was all sorts of out of it i guess i asked for whiskey and then just dropped apparently they had some sort of talk and i guess today we're going down to we're going down to the ranch Che's granddad got some horses, called the guy he knew. So we'll see how that ride goes. I just, I feel like I should be hungover, but I'm not. It, I'm, I'm numb. You know, as we were riding out to the ranch, uh, being on the horses, those things are big. Those are big horses, by the way. We're riding out to the ranch. I just remembered something that Charlie said before he went and offed himself. He said that one time he remembered seeing his brother, Calvin, riding out onto the prairie with what looked like a, a body wrapped in something on the back of the horse. He came back alone with nothing else on the horse. I'm wondering if we're going to ride past or over wherever that body might be buried. We were out there riding for eh, about a day and a half. It was really nice calm. A little bit of small talk here and there, and then we camped. You know, it was kind of nice camping on purpose, instead of just passing out on a park bench. Being able to take it in and really enjoy it. I can't remember which one of us it was, but as we're riding, one of us spotted this, uh, this metal glint on the ground. We come up on it, and we open it up, and I guess there was a cellar down there. We, uh, we find this basement in the cellar. We go down about 20 feet. There's this hallway. Uh, Chait pointed out that there were blood stains on the wall. We go down the hallway. There's a room off to the left. It's this weird sort of bunker. It's a pentagram burnt into the wood. Down at the end of the hallway, these red candles, dirty mattress on the floor. One of the walls was just covered in various tools. If you could call them that, they look like they weren't just tools. Found an old, uh, old camera, kind you would uh, use film in. You know, not like a, a camcorder or anything like that. Like an old, you know, whatever millimeter film. So there's a bunch of film reels down there too. Sure, why not? Wayne picks up that there's these hidden doors on the one wall. He opens them up. I wish that hadn't happened. Che goes over, shines his light into the room, and that flashlight was not bright enough, but it was still bright enough. There were bodies everywhere, all over the floor, hanging on the wall. That room was too big for what it was. It seemed, you know, bigger on the inside than it should have been on the outside. I don't know who could have built it, or how, but it was there all the same. It's this uh, black throne in the middle, the figure in a black robe, cradling a goat's head like it was a baby. And there's just this ungodly buzzing, just buzzing. And this like crimson cloud was pulsating between the bodies, and this swarm of flies just rises up from them, and slams up against one of the ones on the wall, and just starts filling it. And it just gets bigger and bigger, the stomach massive. If 
fucking it bursts and all this slime and shit comes out and there's a person in there. It was Welkstetter. Calvin. Now he starts none of us can move. And he starts giving us this big I'm back monologue. You know, it's like some comic book supervillain shit. Except, you know, it's naked. And he's just going on and on and making fun of us. We can't stop him. We're done for him. And one of us moved or something. I, I don't remember who. He starts freaking out. And then the, the figure on the on the throne stands up. Robe drops off. It was uh, Christina Eagle. Welkstetter staring at us, freaking out. She walks up, puts her hand right through his back, pulls it out. I think she had his heart. She pulled her hand out. He just dropped. She tells us to burn the place down. So uh, we did as best we could. God, I hope that place burned. As we're watching, she just it looks like she goes up this stairway, you know, like, like a literal stairway to heaven. I don't know of any better way to describe it. Fucking Zep knows what they're talking about, I guess. As everything was burning, all these memories just kept coming back. Memories of that night. After after the thing with the dog, we went around. And we saw Charlie standing there with Christina talking about starting over. Getting a fresh start, you know? He wanted something new, something different, something away from all this, all this madness. Next thing I know... Calvin is coming out of the shadows and he just stabs Christina. Just right guts her right there. Oh shit, we ran. We got on our bikes and we ran. We were fucking terrified. And somehow Calvin somehow he's right there behind us. He grabs me, he grabs Wayne, yanks us off our bikes, holding us by our shirts. Fucking oh he fucking licked us. He fucking oh turns to Wayne and tells him everyone you love will die. Tells me I'm gonna see shit I don't wanna see. Yeah, my fucking nightmares. And then he tells us all that we're gonna forget about it anyways. Jesus Christ. What the fuck did he do to all of us? We rode back to the ranch in silence. We just didn't have the words. I'm not sure I still have the words. We get back and there's this redheaded dude from somewhere in Minnesota according to his license plate, looking for Calvin. Says he's got a letter for Calvin or a member of his family, gives us the letter, and drives off. God, I hope he burned that place down. Nothing but ashes. I don't know. I think, uh... I think maybe I'd be better off if, uh... I had just OD'd. Hello again, folks. I'd like to tell you about the Facebook group we run called White Wolf and Onyx Path RPGs Gameplay and Media. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded? one that won't be drowned out by random posts and discussions so that your media could give the attention you deserve. The group is specifically run with the sole intent of being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. The group is already immense and continuing to rapidly grow, with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there.